Yeah, at 9 a.m. On my explainer tonight, we're focusing once again on health. Now, we're focusing on malaria, which is one of the world's oldest and deadliest diseases, which still kills a child every minute. Now, nearly half of the world's population is at risk of malaria, and young children and pregnant women are among the most vulnerable. And Kenya is not left behind. Now, while the country has made some great strides against malaria in the last decade or so, it still remains a huge threat. And the numbers I'm going to give you will tell you why. Now, according to the World Health Organization, there were 3.4 million cases and 12,011 deaths from malaria in Kenya in the year 2021. Now, I'd like you to know that in Kenya, 100% of the population are considered at risk from malaria, with 70% living in high transmission areas. In fact, malaria contributes to 19% of all outpatient consultations and 10% of all hospital admissions in the country. But let's get some global perspective of what this looks like and where Kenya lies. Now, according to the latest World Malaria Report, there were 247 million cases of malaria in 2021 around the world. Also in the same year, the estimated number of deaths from malaria stood at 619,000. Now, of these, Kenya accounted for 1.3% of all of the malaria cases and 1.9 deaths across the globe. Now that might seem like a small percentage, but based on the absolute numbers, it is still a great number. Remember, we've said 12,000 people dying in one year alone from that one ailment is not a small number, which is why the fight against malaria remains one of the top priorities in the country. Now, as for the prevalence, this is what it looks like on the map, right? The transmission of malaria is variable across the country. We've got the endemic areas where transmission is intense throughout the year. Then we've got the highland epidemic prone areas where transmission is seasonal with some considerable variation from year to year. Finally, we have the seasonal malaria transmission areas. So these are the arid and semi-arid areas of northern Kenya and central Kenya. And these are the places that experience some short periods of intense malaria transmission, particularly after the rainy seasons. Now, besides understanding these endemic areas or the areas of prevalence of malaria, it's also important to understand the transmission cycles to know when there is likely to be an outbreak. Now, malaria transmission occurs throughout the year with two peaks. These are the months where most malaria cases are diagnosed. So we've got a primary peak in June and a secondary peak in December. If you've noticed, these are the months that generally follow the rainy seasons. So that means we have a season possibly coming soon after this current rainy season is complete. So all of that considered, what are the symptoms that you need to look out for? The most common early symptoms of malaria are fever, headache and chills. And the symptoms usually start within 10 to 15 days of getting bitten by an affected mosquito. Now, the symptoms for um, may be mild for some people, especially for those who have had a malaria infection before. Now, because these symptoms, as you can see, are not particularly specific, it is important to get tested early. Now, some types of malaria can cause severe illness and death. Infants and children under five years and pregnant women are particularly at higher risk. Now, we've also got the severe symptoms that include extreme fatigue, multiple convulsions, difficulty breathing, dark or bloody urine, and jaundice, which is the yellowing of the eyes and the skin, among others. Now, if you have these severe symptoms, you should get emergency care right away. Now, we've noted that women and children are particularly vulnerable, right? And that is because malaria infection during pregnancy can also cause premature delivery or delivery of a baby with low birth weight. And this is why we urge early treatment, even for mild malaria symptoms. That is important to stop it from spreading towards the severe stage. So 
If you think you have malaria, if you're diagnosed for malaria, what are the interventions that we have? The first, obviously, is prevention, which is better than cure, right? So sleeping under a mosquito net is one of the simplest ways to prevent infection, especially if you're living in those endemic zones that we have talked about here. Even better if that net is treated. Because in addition to providing the obvious physical barrier to the mosquitoes, the insecticide-treated nets can actually kill the mosquitoes on contact. The adoption of these has been rather commendable, by the way, in rural areas in Kenya. Last year, more than half of the children in rural, <laughs> rural areas slept under an insecticide-treated net. Of course, we need to have more of those being taken up in urban areas. As for treatment, like we've said, the earlier the better to reduce transmission and to prevent more severe symptoms and possible death. The first line of treatment is an anti-malarial drug known as ACT. Now there's been another important intervention I want to tell you about and that is preventive treatment for pregnant women. You see, Kenya is one of the 35 countries in Africa that has adopted this intervention. Now, it is given in three doses, especially to pregnant women in the malaria endemic zones, such as the lake region and the coast of Kenya. We also have a malaria vaccine that was recommended in 2021 by the World Health Organization. Now, since that was piloted in 2019, nearly 400,000 children have been vaccinated in the lake endemic counties of Kisumu, Kakamega, Siaya, Homabay, Migori, Busia, Bungoma, and Vihiga. And that is now being extended to other sub-counties to reach, hopefully, another 130,000 children. Now, you know, we've made great strides and great progress, but that war is not over yet. More and more people, especially even those outside the endemic zones, are more prone to catching malaria. This is because that malaria-causing parasite continues to mutate. In addition, it's also increasingly becoming resistant to pesticides. In fact, you'll remember we reported about this uh, not too long ago, the discovery of the new mosquito species that is making things more complicated. That new species is found in urban towns and cities. So you know what that means, that you can catch malaria in Nairobi and many other urban areas around the country. That's why it is important to sleep under a treated net, get diagnosed and treated early, because guess what? Malaria is preventable, it's treatable, and it's curable. There's no need to die from malaria in this day and age. That's my explainer tonight. <laughs>